The coastal plains of Africa has a tapestry of land and sea with mountains, grasslands, fringing coral reefs and rugged coastline. So in our previous lesson we learnt that most of the area of the continent of Africa is a plateau region. So this plateau rises steeply along the coastlines leaving behind narrow coastal plains throughout the boundary of the continent of Africa. So we see that there are major rivers that drain out into the oceans from the steep plateau edges and they do not leave behind much deposit on the coastal areas thus leading to a narrow coastal area along the coast of the continent of Africa. Now we learn about all these important rivers namely River Congo, River Niger, River Nile and River Zambezi which drain over the continent of Africa and they have important basins that have their own unique characteristics. So throughout the plateau region, the basins are surrounded by different plateaus and as we move far away from the equatorial belt, the characteristics keeps changing. So taking a look at one of the most important basins in the central portion of the continent of Africa, we have the Congo Basin. Now the Congo Basin is mostly drained by the second longest river of Africa that is the Congo River. Now we see that the Congo Basin falls in the central portion of the continent which means that it falls in the equatorial belt. This is why the Congo Basin receives enough or abundant rainfall almost throughout the year and it has tropical evergreen rainforest. So the Congo Basin is an important basin in the central region. So I just mentioned that the Congo Basin is majorly drained by the Congo River. Now Congo River is a river that carries the largest amount of water into the Atlantic Ocean. So the Congo River that lies in Central Africa and drains the Congo Basin is the second longest river of Africa and it carries largest amount of water into the Atlantic Ocean. I also mentioned a while ago that the Congo Basin since it falls in the equatorial region receives enough rainfall or the maximum amount of rainfall giving rise to tropical rainforests. So that was about an important basin that lies in the central portion of the continent. However, if we move northwards towards the Chud Basin, we see that the characteristics of this basin changes because of the different climatic conditions that prevail in the northern portion of the continent. We know that most part of the northern portion of the continent is covered by a desert region and to the south of the desert region we have the savanna grasslands of Africa. So we can say that the Chad Basin is surrounded by desert to its north mainly the Sahara Desert and the grasslands to its south mainly the savanna grasslands or the tropical grasslands of Africa. So it has a major influence of both these types of region that is the desert region to the north and the grasslands to its south. Now we can see here in the map that the Chad basin is centered around Lake Chad. So Lake Chad is a freshwater lake that lies almost in the center of the Chad basin. Now there is something very interesting about the Chad Basin. We just saw a while ago that the Congo Basin that lies in the central portion receives abundant amount of rainfall almost throughout the year because it lies in the equatorial region and thus bears evergreen tropical forest. But it is not the same for the Chad Basin. Why so? Even though the Chad Basin lies to the south of the largest hot desert in the world, it is not too dry. This is mainly because it is drained by several small streams that drain into the Chad Basin making it the largest inland drainage in Africa. To the northeastern part of the continent, we have another significant basin of Africa. Here we are talking about the Nile Basin. 
Now the Nile Basin is drained by the longest river of the world. Do you know which river are we talking about? Of course, the Nile River. So the Nile River, which is the longest river of the world, drains the Nile Basin in the northeastern part of the continent of Africa. So Nile Basin is another important basin in the northeast part of Africa. Now the Nile Basin, which is drained by River Nile, is a very fertile area that makes it agriculturally very productive. It is one of the most agriculturally rich areas of Africa, giving opportunity for cultivation of number of food crops as well as cash crops. This area, because of its high fertility and agricultural significance, is also one of the most densely populated areas of Africa. Now, River Nile is a perennial river, which means that it has water throughout the year. Now, Nile River that drains the Nile Basin originates in Lake Victoria and then it passes over the northeastern part of the continent and finally drains into the Mediterranean Sea. Now, River Nile has two major tributaries, namely the White Nile and the Blue Nile. So the White Nile and the Blue Nile are the two major tributaries of Nile River. White Nile originates in Lake Victoria while the Blue Nile originates in Lake Tana. So these two tributaries together form River Nile that drains into the Mediterranean Sea. Now we all must be thinking that River Nile that is the longest river of the world it is a perennial river, right? And it is sourced from Lake Victoria, which is a shallow lake. So how does a shallow lake provide enough water supply to a perennial river like River Nile? So Lake Victoria is the source of River Nile of Egypt. But again, the question that still remains in our mind, how a shallow lake like Lake Victoria feeds the longest river of the world, which is perennial in nature. Let's see what could be the reason behind this mystery. Help me to answer this simple question. Which of the following is the source of River Nile? Is it Lake Albert? Lake Tana or Lake Victoria? Well, the correct answer is Lake Victoria. We just learned that Lake Victoria is the source of River Nile. Now let's unfold the mystery. So if we trace the origin of River Nile, we will reach Lake Victoria. Now the largest lake of Africa, Lake Victoria, is a shallow lake. However, it falls in the equatorial belt because of which it receives abundant amount of rainfall throughout the year. This is why Lake Victoria is able to provide enough water supply to the perennial river that is River Nile. So there we looked at three important basins, the Congo Basin, the Chad Basin and also the Nile Basin. And we also saw how the Congo Basin and the Nile Basin are drained by two important rivers of Africa, that is the Congo River and the Nile River respectively. Now there's another important river in the western part of the continent, that is River Niger. So River Niger is a principal river of western Africa and it runs for a certain portion of the Sahara Desert. Now, the region where it runs through in the Sahara Desert, there it is a permanent source of water for that part of the Sahara Desert region. Now, besides that, River Niger is the third longest river of Africa after River Nile and River Congo. So, it is the third longest river of Africa. Now, that was a principal river in the northwestern part of the continent. Now, if we come down to the very south, we see another significant river of Africa, that is River Orange. Now, River Orange is one of the most important rivers flowing in the southern part of Africa. And this river is found near Namib Desert. So, River Orange is found near the Namib Desert and it is one of the most important rivers in the southern part of the continent. 
Now, River Orange forms a natural boundary between Namibia and South Africa for the last 450 kilometers before it empties itself into the Atlantic Ocean to the west of the continent. So, we see that it forms a natural boundary between South Africa and Namibia for the last 450 kilometers before it empties itself into the Atlantic Ocean. So, here is an image of the River Orange. Now, besides River Orange, other two important rivers in the southern portion of the continent are River Zambezi and River Limpopo. So, here are images of the same. This is of River Limpopo and this is of River Zambezi. They also play important role in the southern portion by providing enough water for agricultural and industrial purposes. So, if you remember from the previous lesson, we learnt how the Victoria Falls was discovered by David Livingston, an explorer of the early years who named this falls after Queen Victoria. So, Victoria Falls on River Zambezi in the southern African region is world's largest waterfall due to its width. So, because of its width, Victoria Falls is the largest waterfall of the world with a width of 1708 meters. Here we have glimpses of the spectacular Victoria Falls that is known for its natural beauty and is also a famous tourist attraction of the continent of Africa. So, here is a map that shows us all the important lakes and rivers of the continent of Africa, namely River Congo, River Zambezi, River Orange, River Nile with two major tributaries that is the White Nile and the Blue Nile, River Niger, Lake Victoria and Lake Chad. So, these are the most important lakes and rivers of the African continent. So, all those rivers play a very important role because they provide fertile lands for agricultural purposes and they also bring in a lot of water that is used for industrial purpose and agricultural purpose again. But these rivers do not favour navigation. Why so? Because most of the rivers flow over undulated and uneven surfaces. Therefore, they do not favour navigation. However, the water brought down by these rivers are used for the generation of hydroelectricity. For example, a very important power plant is the hydropower plant in Angola. Another important power plant is the hydropower dam in Mozambique. Other than that, they are also used for industrial purposes and agricultural or domestic purposes. So, the water brought down by these rivers, though are not favourable for navigation purpose, they definitely help in the production of hydroelectricity and used extensively in industries and for domestic reasons. So, in this lesson, we were able to understand other two important physical features of the continent that is the coastal plains and the different river basins that are drained by important rivers. We learned how the river basins have different characteristics depending upon their location and how these rivers play an important role as they provide opportunities for the generation of hydroelectricity and also for the use in industrial and domestic purpose. So, these rivers form grounds for the development and establishment of large hydropower projects which will in future help in the development of the continent of Africa. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads.
So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.